we have striven after our labors are over rest to our soul will be given all the eternal shore we're going home of the soul beautiful home there we shall rest never to roam we are free from all care happy and bright i know jesus is there because he is the light often the storm lonely are we sigh for home longing for thee it's a beautiful home of the ransom the crystal sea. Yes, a sweet rest is remaining for the true children of God, where there will be no complaining, never a chasting run. We're going home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam, we are free from all care, happy and bright, I know Jesus is there, he is the light, off in the storm, The crystal sea. Soon the bright homeland of dawning, we shall behold the glad door. Lean on the Lord till the morning. Trust till the night is gone. We're going home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam, we are free from all care, happy and bright, I know Jesus is there because he is the chapter 1 and verse number 10. A Galatian, the chapter is 1 
And the verse is number 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thus is the reading of the word of God and leaping out of verse number 10 is our pivotal question for consideration, evaluation, and scrutinization. Please them or please him. Is there anybody here who wants to please God? The Websterian definition of the word please is to give enjoyment to give satisfaction, to be the will that is agreeable with God. I ask you again, is there anybody here who wants to please God? There are some people whose main objective in life is to please their friends. They want social approval. Some people's primary desire in life is to please political people. That's political approval. Others' primary desire in life is to please their job. That's occupational approval. Athletes try to please the coach. Students endeavor to please the teacher. The lawyer wants to please the client. The doctor wants to please the patient. The flight attendant wants to please the passengers. And some wives want to please their husband. Didn't get no help there. <laughs> and some children want to please their parents. But is there anybody here who wants to please God? Pleasing people is an impossible task. Say that again, Brother Preacher. Pleasing people is an impossible task. The story is told about a man 
who was leading his donkey down the street. And as he passed by, some people said, that man is leading the donkey when he should be riding the donkey. He is stupid. So he climbed on top of the donkey and rode the donkey. And in a short distance, as he rode along the way, people saw his long legs hanging and people criticized him again and said, it's a shame for that long-legged man riding that little donkey. So the man got off of the donkey and put the donkey on his shoulders, started walking down the street, donkey all tied up on his shoulders, and then somebody saw him and said, Look at that crazy man carrying a donkey on his back. He is out of his mind. You can't please people. When he led the donkey, he was stupid. When he rolled the donkey's back, it was a shame. And when he carried the donkey on his back, he was crazy. You can't please people. Yeah. Proverbs 16 and 7. The Bible says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace. We ought to be concerned about pleasing the Lord. Romans 15 and 1, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, not to please ourselves. 1 Thessalonians 2.15, the Bible says, who both killed the Lord Jesus and the own prophets have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Man ought to please God. First Thessalonians 4 and 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God so ye would abound more and more. Every child of God ought to want to please God. Amen. The text says, or do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Galatians 1 and 10. Before Paul's conversion, it was his objective to please the people. He got letters of authority from the Sanhedrin Council, Acts 9 and verse 1. He wanted their good esteem, but now, in the text, 
He has a higher aim in life. And that aim is not to please men. But that aim is to please God. And so he doesn't mind saying it over and over again. If I please them, I will not please God. So it is please them or please him. And so in the next two verses, he says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, but neither did I receive it of man, and neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank God Paul was not a people pleasing preacher. Amen. A preacher will lose his mind and lose his soul trying to please all of these church folk. Amen. Say amen if you can. Amen. Is there anybody here who wants to please God? Is there anybody here who wants to please God? There are two things I want to tell you this morning that you and I must do in order to please God. First of all, every child of God needs to understand Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Am I right about it? Yes, Hebrews 11 and 6, the Bible says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. Amen and amen. amen. We must have faith to please Almighty God. We breathe by faith. We drink by faith. We eat by faith. We prepare by faith. We breathe by faith. There are millions of germs in the air, but nature purifies in part through trees. The trees use the carbon from humans, and men use the oxygen from the trees and therefore we breathe air thank God we can breathe we drink water by faith we don't make a chemical analysis of the water to see if it is poisonous before we drink we believe that the center that the cities sanitation department has done its part to purify our water. But we drink it by faith. By faith. Abraham, when he was old, head bent, stepped out on the promises of God looking for a city whose builder and whose maker is God. That was done by faith. By faith, Abel offered a more acceptable 
sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Joseph, down in the land of Egypt, said, freedom is bound to come. When you pack up and pull out of Egypt, dig up my bones and take them with you to the land of promise. That was all done by faith. By faith, Joshua oh, marched around the walls of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. I tell you, it is impossible to please God without faith. And one day, a blind man sat on the Jericho road and cried out, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus anointed his eyes and the blind man went to the pool of Siloam and washed and came back seeing. And they asked him all kind of questions to his parents. Parents said, he is of age, ask him. And they asked him and he said, I don't have the answer to your theological question. But this one thing I know, whereas I was blind, but I met Jesus, and now I see all of this was done by faith. Am I right about it? Every child of God has to walk by faith and not by sight if you want to make heaven your home. The sinner man must have faith in coming to God. Hebrews 11 and 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is the reward of them that tell us in the sick after him. Not by faith only, but he must have faith. James 2.24, the only time faith only is used in the Bible. It, say, it says, now we see then that a man is not justified by faith only. Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. The Lord put faith and baptism together in order to be saved. And friends, if you want to follow God's word, the Bible is right. Every child of God must have faith to stay with God. Am I right about it? You know, you know, it takes a whole lot of faith to love your enemies. It takes a whole lot of faith when you are sick and can't get well. It takes a whole lot of faith when you are squeezed by an iron vice of affliction. Trouble in my way, I have to cry sometime. It takes a whole lot of faith when you're hit by the sledgehammer of unjustified criticism. People don't talk about you. Just like I said, about that man carrying the donkey. You cannot please people because people don't even know what they want. Say amen if you can.
as we are going through this corona pandemic, we must have faith in God that God is going to take care of us and God is going to bring us out of this dilemma. We must have faith in God that he's going to keep us from seeing and unseen dangers. We must have faith in God as we continue to walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another and the blood and the blood and the blood and the blood cleanses us from all of our sin. We must have faith in God. Trouble in my way. I got to cry sometime. But Jesus will fix it after a while. Is there anybody here who knows that Jesus will fix it after a while? By and by. By and by. We'll understand it better by and by. Trials are dark on every hand and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land where we're going to follow Him until we die and we'll understand it better by and by. Ah, and ah, when the morning comes, when all of the saints of God are gathered home, is there anybody here wants to be in the number? After all that I've been through, I still have faith. I ain't going to let no virus take my faith. Don't you see our theme? No pandemic can stop my praise. Is there anybody here who believes that? God is still on the throne. God is still in the blessing business. God still open doors that no man can shut. God still makes a way out of a no way. God still heals us, lifts us up, put us on our feet. I know God is, and I'm going to continue. To walk by faith. We can't please God without faith. Now, if you want to please them, you can't please God. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 13, Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go thereat. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. And few there be that find it. To please them is to follow the broad way. But we follow the straight and the narrow way. The Bible says one faith, but men say many faiths. The Bible says one baptism, but them say 
many baptisms. The Bible says one church, but them say any church will do. The Bible says sing and make melody in your hearts unto the Lord, but them say sing and play, sing and beat, sing and blow. But the Bible is right. Are you going to please them or please him? Not only must we have faith to please God, but we must have loyalty to please God. Loyalty pleases God. God is a jealous God. Thou shall have no other gods before me. I am the Lord thy God and him shall thou worship. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things, God says, will be added unto you. Do what God says. And you'll find out that the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are unto their prayers. Loyalty. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Ye cannot serve God and manman. Matthew 6, 24. And the Bible is right. Put God first in your life. And God will bless you. And it doesn't matter what your situation is. God will bless you. Put God before your relatives. And your friends. Put God first in your life. Keep on seeking the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. With the blessed assurance. That God Almighty we'll see that you have the necessities of life. John, you need God in your life. Mary, you need God in your life. And God wants undying loyalty. Put him first, not fourth or fifth. Put him first in your life. And if you are not a Christian, you need to become one. How does a man or a woman become a Christian? It is by hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Don't hear Trumpology. Don't hear white supremacyology. But hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Believe in Christ as the Son of the Living God, John 8 24. Repent of your sins. Luke 13, 3 and 5. And then be make that great confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 32, whosoever confessed me before men, 
Him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But he that denieth me, I will also deny him. You need to ask or answer the question to please them or to please him. If you want to please him, you'll make that confession that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. Yes, sir. And then you're baptized in water for the remission of your sins, Acts 2.38. And it's easy to be baptized in water because that's what God said. And if you want to be saved, please him and not them. And if you're here today as a child of God, you've been slipping and sliding, ducking and hiding, off and on. Some time may help me, Lord Jesus. You need to repent of your sins and come on back home. Lord, I've wandered far from God. But now I'm coming home. And this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Won't you come now of either category as we stand and sing?